Here's a sparring session with Zion Niles, a HEMA instructor with eight years of experience. It's been well over a year since I got in any regular HEMA practice, so it was great to finally be swinging swords again, and there was of course plenty of rust to shake off. And it's always good to be practicing with someone at a high skill level to really challenge you and force you to try out new approaches. So you'll see a lot of cautious back and forth here. And this, by the way, also answers one of the questions that people ask sometimes, how long a sword fight would take. And this really depends on the, the fighters involved, how experienced are they, how cautious are they. In this case, we just treat the swords with a lot of respect. We don't want to get hit, so we're mainly focused on our own defense rather than just hitting the opponent. And we're just feeling out what the other person does. So you see there's a lot of binds. Here was an attempt to do a false edge cut at my hand, just as an example, so you see what's going on here. So there you can see there's a prolonged period of time without any hit. We're trying to snipe the hands here and there in the arms. We're trying to get an opening, going back and forth, going for the binds to get a feel for what's happening. And finally I committed to an angle and I was able to get a thrust in, but I didn't control his blade at the same time. So he scored a light cut to my face. Not enough to stop anyone, but would probably result in a nice scar. So I use the different markers, green, yellow, and, and red, to give you an idea of what kind of hit it is. So here we've got a false edge cut to both of my hands at the same time. Normally, I tend to score hand hits as green, as a light hit, which can still end the fight. But in this case, because it hit both hands at the same time and had pretty good structure behind it, I think that was a little more serious. There's an example of a light hit. So he dipped under and came up with a false edge cut to my forearm. And there I got in exactly what I wanted before. And this time I did control the blade at the same time with the thrust. Here I landed a false edge cut to his wrist or hand and I was far enough away to not have to worry about the thrust. By the way, even though I'm wearing gauntlets, this is just for safety, this represents unarmored dueling. So not battlefield combat, not armored, and it's light sparring with minimal protective gear, which I would not recommend unless you have enough experience. I tried to go for a leg cut there, but didn't land it. Next, I was going for a false edge shield how, but he sidestepped and got my hand there, as you can see. So this really illustrates the importance of mobility. Just keep moving around. This is what really saves you more often than not. In the sparring match, you can really see how often evasion keeps us safe. That's the best way to deal with an attack, just not be there. This went on for a bit longer, back and forth without any hit. There's a cut to my forearm. This could be serious with a very committed cut with plenty of rotation. Could, in fact, sever the forearm. But this one had little rotation, so that's why I scored it as a light wound. And Tira interrupted his thrust with a shilha while also stepping backward, which is important to not get hit by the thrust. There, he's try to snipe my hands again. And this is something that you'll see a lot. There's another false touch cut. I'm not used to fighting somebody who targets the hands and arms so much, which is great, by the way, because this is the safest thing you can do. When only your opponent's hands or arms are within reach, you're definitely outside of their reach. Then only your own hands and arms might be exposed. So it's basically the safest thing you can do, and it's a good way to either end the fight or at least disadvantage them. Then I succeeded in cutting to the leg and received a cut with minimal rotation to the face afterwards. I did not land it as low on the blade as I should have, but because it targeted the hamstring, I think it's still likely effective. So again, nice and cautious here. You do not want to just rush in and neglect your own defense. But anytime you try to exploit an opening in your opponent, you present one yourself, of course. That's just the inherent danger of sword fighting. Again, hands exposed. You see that again and again and again. <laughs> I do lead with my hands too much. This one I scored yellow because he had good rotation in there and engaged his entire body. So that would have definitely been effective cut. This one could have been either green or yellow because I moved my hands forward while he moved with a rising cut upward. That can amplify it. 
There tends to be debate and disagreement about what hits are valid. I used to subscribe to the idea that light contact like this, for example, is not valid, should not be scored. But I've changed my mind on that a little bit because here's the thing. If you can land a quick hit with little rotation on your opponent without endangering yourself, that's still a good thing. Something like this works quite well because, again, this represents unarmored combat and sharp swords can do a lot to flesh. So this may be all you need to sever a tendon, for example, and make it very difficult to use that limb or fight effectively in general. They wouldn't stop fighting necessarily, but it would be much harder. There's a cut to my head. Rotation was decent, but it only hit with the very end of the blade, so it wouldn't cut very deeply. This right here is what I mean. The yellow hit has a lot of rotation to it. The green one, not so much. So the yellow one would do more damage. In this case, we both had light contact. So I normally like to discourage strikes with insufficient rotation that wouldn't cut deeply. But if you receive one of those, you still did something wrong. So you still exposed yourself in some way. So that should be taken into consideration, right? And a cut like this would certainly do damage. Zion did it in a very controlled way with little force because I wasn't padded there. Even so, my arm was bruised afterwards. So you can imagine if that was sharp, it would do something. This one I marked green because even though thrust is effective in general, it just didn't penetrate very far. He moved backwards and he was far enough away that it wouldn't have gone that far. So trying to get around his defense. He has excellent defense overall. It makes it really difficult to get an opening that you can take without endangering yourself. And there is the forearm snipe again. I need to really work on not exposing my hands as much. I do that a lot. I really see that in this footage here. There's two things I notice. For one, I lead way too much with my hands and keep them exposed. A quick shield how to the forearm. And also my footwork is sloppy. Uh, it used to be, and it definitely didn't get any better. Excellent call on this. So he actually blocked my cut with a thrust of his own. It was extremely well done because he defended at the same time while attacking. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. He got my hand, I got his wrist. So as you can see, the hands are very endangered, even with the large guards on longswords. But that can be mitigated with enough practice. If you move well, you don't expose them anywhere near as much. It's difficult, but there are definitely ways to avoid exposing your hands. There are through a feint to one side and a krumpau to the other, which connected with the forearm, and then he got a slice to my wrist afterwards. And again, there's the forearm. There's a high feint into an undercut to the hand. So notice how he keeps blocking off access to one side in particular the side that's easier to strike. So I tried to go for the leg instead, which he evaded. Then I figured, why not try that again? He probably won't expect another leg cut. And there it is. And that's to the inside of the thigh, which is extremely dangerous because you have a major artery there. While I came in for a cut, he sniped to the hand again. And uh, then my cut at the end was way too far away. This was really good rotation. And I moved my hands into it. So that's why I marked that as yellow. That's likely to do enough damage to the hand to render it completely unusable. Try to get in with a thruster, which he swept aside and uh, countered, which I also defended. This is definitely teaching me to be careful about committed cuts. On the one hand, they're great because they're much more likely to do severe damage, but it's just a lot easier to interrupt them or parry and counter. So shorter cuts will not expose you quite as much. So it's a balance of offense versus defense, basically. There, I got in a cut to the forearm. And it's a very different dynamic than I had with other people that I've sparred with before. So this really made me have to think and change my approach. There's a nice thrust underneath the hands. So, yeah, I had to constantly change my approach. I mean, I didn't change it up as much as I wanted or thought I did. <laughs> Footage always shows you things that you didn't notice at the time. 
like uh, yeah the sloppy footwork for example on my part his footwork is fine but mine is if the foot is sometimes misaligned you know, not perfectly aligned with the knee and sometimes I just don't really push off enough uh, don't have the legs bend enough sometimes things like that so here as soon as the sword was off to the side I used the opportunity to thrust to the head and I receive another Faltesh cut to the forearm. I took so many of those that I really need to work on that. And again. <laughs> also, circular movement is good. You see that quite a bit here, but always good to practice that yet even more. Not sure what happened here. I think I got a hit in, but it's hard to see. You can only hear it. I used two different camera angles, which comes in really handy, but sometimes it can still be a little difficult to see. And there's another controlled thrust. I'm very happy with that one. Got light contact on the hand, but that seems like an okay trade in that situation. This also shows how a lot of techniques can go very differently when the opponent knows what he's doing. You know, there's plenty of things you can do you can come in with a feint and cut or thrust to a different opening you can control the bind and thrust etc etc there's so many things but the opponent is not going to just stand there and take it and sometimes things like this happen right? striking at the exact same time getting a double hit but of course even a technique that's great does not always work because if the opponent is quick skilled enough to react to it then yeah what are you gonna do nothing exists in sword fighting as bulletproof there I was able to stab the hand this one was fantastic he landed a thrust right in the armpit while I cut to the forearm that's definitely not a good trade <laughs> That thrust to the armpit would be nasty. Fortunately, he had enough control to not make that dangerous. It would have would have been good to be wearing fencing jackets for sure, but it's also nice to practice without all that. So here we had two hits that both had bad edge alignment, so can't count those. Here he interrupts me again with a thrust to the head. And that's what we got. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and have a good one.